Curitato, and um, good evening. And uh, thank you very much indeed, um, Barry and Paul, for inviting me along uh, tonight to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is um, Auckland. And um, although I do have plenty of um, favorite um, subjects, I just to make sure I've got the right controls here. OK, and we're off. Um, so this is about a truly sustainable Tanaki Makoro, um, which is another aspect of reinventing paradise. And um, this is what it looked at like shortly after um, Auckland was founded. Uh, that was uh, September 18th, 1840. This was um, just in the years after that. And John Logan Campbell writes very brilliantly about uh, the city he had a great vision for here. So the question is, what will we make of Auckland by the time we get to our bicentenary of the city on the 18th, 18, uh, 2040? Um, in 2007, the Tate Modern Gallery in London had an exhibition about urbanization because that was the year that the United Nations deemed that for the first time in human history, a majority of people lived in cities. Um, but we're heading very fast to around about 80% of people living in cities. And these were a couple of posters I took at the time. Um, and you can see on the right how important um, uh, cities are in terms of carbon footprints and the like. And so the, it's a massive impact. And it posed really important questions like, can cities be improved by design? And very crucially, can cities promote social justice and greater equality? Uh, that's what social justice looks like in Sao Paulo. Um, uh, that's middle class housing in Sao Paulo. Um, that's Los Angeles today, well, a few years ago, which is um, actually remarkably uh, uh, regenerated, uh, regenerated, and also Chicago in recent years. So um, major cities in the world are making some fantastic steps forward. Um, but the future will be very different indeed, because um, cities are going to have to become uh, far more self-sufficient for energy, and probably food too. Um, and they also need to be delightful places to live and work. So where might Auckland go in that? Um, who, hands up, who thinks that Auckland, if anybody thinks Auckland has a low carbon plan? Is anybody involved in that low carbon plan? Right, there is a low carbon plan. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't mean this um, rudely about people who are involved, but this is a measure of how difficult this is because it's actually quite a good plan, it's just nobody's operationalizing it very much. So I'll um, just take a few slides from this. So um, this is carbon footprints per capita uh, per year in various cities of the world. Uh, Auckland's not that high. Um, although major cities like London and New York are a lot uh, lower. And then we have some massively big cities uh, in terms of carbon footprint. So Auckland's um, 2040 target is three tonnes um, per person in 2040, but that's where Copenhagen is today, and Copenhagen plans to be carbon neutral by 2030. Um, so that's the sort of benchmark we're chasing. Um, you can see the very big ambitions here, the dark blue Right, reading from right to left um, is, say, Vancouver, 80% reduction by 2050, um, Auckland's 50%, and then you can see some other time frames there. So uh, Auckland is uh, at best in the middle of the pack uh, on that. Um, the three big areas of um, carbon emissions are stationary energy on the left and industrial process emissions. Quite a bit we could do around that, um, say biomass, for example, um, indeed um, industrial scale PV won't be too far away. Um, but the big problem down there is a third of it is um, uh, land transport, i.e. Um, vehicles. This is the, what it looks like for households. Typically, uh, half our carbon footprint is food, 40% uh, is commuting by car. Household energy and waste don't really count in that, although the waste is important to get down to zero waste. That's the greenhouse gas footprint. Um, but food's going to be very, very hard for Aucklanders to knock on the head, um, as is indeed um, uh, commuting by car. So there are plans um, or, or ambitions. So around travel down the bottom there, 30 to 40 percent of cars here in Auckland by 2040 would be electric. Um, I think uh, that would be possible, but with very, very much more ambitious plans and policies um, than the government has at the moment, which largely consists of Simon Bridges, 
running around the country opening rapid charges. Um, and um, uh, some of which are free from Vector. Can't be free. Yeah. And um, on energy, um, also uh, the dominant view of energy is still about um, a 19th century um, reticulated heavy industrial view of, of electricity. That's certainly the one the Electricity Association uh, Authority promotes in regulatory terms. Um, Vector is uh, one of the exceptions to that in understanding how local generation and local lines companies um, are part of a very important, uh, very resilient smart grid. Um, but again, uh, we've got none of the right policy settings coming down from Wellington um, to help make that happen. So the likes of um, Vector is pushing hard, very hard against that. Um, Auckland also believes that um, given the very substantial part of the city, which is uh, actually um, forests and agriculture and regional parks, um, is that there is um, a great opportunity um, to um, add to the carbon sinks in Auckland, which would be good, um, but it would also be better if we also thought even more ambitiously, for example, about purging our back gardens of exotics and trying to get more of our back gardens back to natives, for example. Uh, would be um, a truly big push on sustainability. Um, and then last but not least, um, the low carbon plan is very terrestrial, um, but um, the very important part of Auckland's sustainability issue is the Hauraki Gulf. Um, we seriously abuse the Hauraki Gulf um, in all sorts of ways, from stormwater to sediment um, to <coughs> overfishing um, and all the, all the rest. An incredibly important piece of work, very huge piece of work, is coming to fruition later on this year with the Hauraki Gulf Marine Spatial Plan under the lovely name of Sea Change. And um, this is going to be terrifically important, but again, it won't work unless uh, central government um, changes a lot of legislation to be able to make this work. So, so many of the things that we have an ambition to do in Auckland uh, we have completely the wrong central government settings for, um, but we're very lacking um, on um, local government engagement on this. So, you know, these are great plans within council. But when, for example, um, just this week uh, on Tuesday, I was, uh, Monday and Tuesday, I was chairing a transport infrastructure conference here in Auckland, and on Tuesday we had seven of the 19 mayoral candidates uh, we had them for about an hour and 20 minutes, um, quizzing them on transport and infrastructure. Um, two of the seven on the panel were climate deniers. And only one of the um, candidates there, David Hay from the Green Party, um, had any concept. And what, he was the only person who mentioned climate change in his opening comments. He was the only person who was putting forward any kind of policies um, about driving um, Auckland to a low carbon future. So there is great ambition. There is a great opportunity to truly make this one of the great cities of the world. I mean, this is the most extraordinary natural setting between um, three harbours, because thanks to the super city, we got part of the Kuiper as well. Uh, and um, between, um, obviously, uh, fabulous bush clad hills um, out to the west and the Waitakeris and down to the southeast and Hanuas. This is a remarkable, <coughs> remarkable place. Um, and we're kind of hanging on by our fingertips here in terms of um, the very fine line between trashing and enhancing the place. Um, the um, unitary plan uh, will help in some respects, um, but a lot of the important drivers that would have helped do this um, have not come through in the unitary plan. Um, so there's um, terrific work for the new council and the new mayor to do um, to try to build some of that back in. But um, to use a well-known phrase from a central government leader, at the end of the day, <laughs> um, it actually comes down to us because we're talking about truly global issues, um, but the only progress happens locally um, with individuals, with communities. Um, so this is actually about us wanting this to happen. And I'd say one of the most disappointing things about all this, because uh, when I have occasions to facilitate various um, events about Auckland, so for example, I, twice earlier this year, I've done um, large dinners with business leaders, and I've asked them, people, to tell me what's their favorite place in Auckland? Um, what's um, a place that they think they'd like to visit that they haven't visited yet? 
And it's remarkably hard to get people to say what they love about Auckland. Where are the very special places? I mean, I, I love standing on top of Bastion Point, for example. Um, or, um, um, you know, I could wax very lyrical about the city. So I think we're still lacking a very deep engagement here. And it's partly because, although as a human population, we are more urbanized than France or Germany or the UK or the United States, we're more urbanized than th those countries. We still define ourselves as a nation and by, as a people by our rural and wild parts. So my final point is, if Auckland is going, if Tamaki Makoro is going to be truly sustainable, we've got to start defining ourselves by <coughs> urban sustainability um, and giving a very strong Aotearoa New Zealand expression of that to the world in how we design, build, run, and live in our cities. Thank you.